Shalom. Shalom. I'd like to start off by giving all praise, all honor, and glory to Yahweh, Baha Shem, Yahweh Shah. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Citations to the elect men out there to the four corners of the earth, teaching the truth and sincerity. And today I wanted to go over a quick little lesson about this uh the Indian boarding schools, you know, which was directed towards the so called uh Native Americans, which is the tribe of Gad. Um the so called Seminole Indians, the tribe of Reuben. Alright? And we're going to get straight into it. And we're going to start off with this video. I'm going to jump back and forth a little bit. And uh, I'm going to pause it and make the scripture in here and there. All right, so let's get right to it. Fluctuations, including leaving for war and the gain and loss of industry, but the longest lasting of the forced relocations was the Indian boarding schools. If we look at the history of education as it affects the indigenous peoples of the country, we really should, in all families, go back in time prior to 1492 and acknowledge the fact that Indigenous peoples had developed their own school systems. That by the time you got a, a child matured to adulthood, they were very capable, competent individuals who could speak their languages fluently, who knew their own history as a peoples, who were very skilled artisans. There was this very strong awareness of how to all right, and I'm going to jump up. Now, if you hear what she said before, uh, he said uh, there was a pe our people knew their history, you know. They knew their language and whatsoever, right? So, but we know according to Jer Jeremiah, also what? That we will lose, uh, uh, we will discontinue from our heritage, right? So, I'm going to bring that out. Jeremiah 17 and 4. And thou... Even thyself shall discontinue from thy heritage that I gave thee, and I will cause thee to serve thy enemies in a land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in my anger, which shall burn forever. Now, you know, the key point was, uh, thou will, thou will discontinue from thy heritage. And this is what was going on in these boarding schools, right? It was another indoc uh, in indoctrination of the what? So-called so -called white man, all right? Which is the biblical Edomites. And that was going on back then, but it's the same thing that's happening in the modern time now. You know, when uh, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans uh, are sending your children to school, and they're not doing nothing but getting indoctrinated by what the white man's history. You know, the reason why they come home from school with homework, paperwork, talking about uh, Colum Happy Columbus Day and all that things, or history about Alexander the Great. And all these different things, but they don't know their own true history. You know, they learn in the American way of life. And they're adopting to it in each and every way. Alright, so let's continue on. We had our own uh, ways of educating our young people to, to be very capable, competent adults. 1568 where the first schools were established once they began to penetrate the interior of the continent wanted to anglicize us to take away our own sense of identity and who we are uh, through 17 and the four. new kinds of educational systems that they imported and what did she the say she said what began uh, Carlisle came into the continent. In 1879, the boarding school um, 
movement, if, if it's called that, is a product of a philosophy of assimilation that's also marked by that time period. Uh, this was one way of assimilating uh, Native peoples into the uh, American mainstream society. To change a people, you begin with their children. So that was what the schools were, were aimed at doing, changing us as a people and beginning with our children. Now, right now in 2016, and even a little going further back, is this not what this so-called white man is still doing today? They're changing our children, you know, in the ways where they're talking this unity bullshit, talking about love everyone, and, and screaming all this peace and all these different things. You know, our kids are coming home with, uh, uh, you know, different homework assignments. And it's, it, it, it teaches them nothing about their own culture, their own history. You know, it's everything is everything and everything is all about what the so-called white man. The reason why it was such a traumatic experience for children, particularly in the early reservation period, is that the children had been growing up in a, in a community that was much different from the boarding schools. And in fact, the school system itself was designed to be wholly different. Uh, supportive of, of, uh, of a different kind of cultural lifestyle. To make Edomite us more culture. like them so that we could be dealt with right. um, and controlled and uh, to make room and space for other people. So my mom always says the road to hell is paved with good intentions. And so, you know, th they may have thought this is what is best for Indian people, you know, but it wasn't what Indian people were determining was best for them. By 19... See, Edom think they know what's best for us. They don't know a goddamn thing. This is why the people are in the condition, conditions that we're in now, you know. And now they've been destroyed so much that they think Esau has the best, uh, uh, what, what word could I say? That they had the best, you know, um, um, you know the best uh the best uh and in, in, intentions for them so to speak you know our people think Esau has the best intentions for them you know so like you know when we're out doing the highways and byways telling them the, the righteous thing and the good thing that's coming from the heavenly father you know they don't want to hear what we got to say they shrug it off they despise the word but when it, when when Esau says something they look at him uh highly because that what they've been indoctrinated through the school systems and at that, you know, the white man has the best thing for you. Hundred, the federal government was in its fourth educational strategy to kill American Indian culture. Church run missions first had dominated the white education of Indians. Next, Indian day schools on reservations had been introduced. Reservation based boarding schools soon followed. And then finally, boarding schools were located outside reservations. The plan was simple and cruel. Take students far enough away from their families for a long enough time, and they would become white in speech, work skills, and attitudes. General Pratt, you know, his motto was kill the Indian and save the man. So the idea of removing children became, I guess, practiced in... It would be hard for any of us to imagine, those of us that are parents or grandparents, if someone came and took our children and we were to never see them again. Tribes were receiving rations from the federal government in the form of, of cattle or, or flour uh, ration days where people would come and collect their, their, their foodstuffs. It was then easy for the federal government to identify uh, family units and and know which children were were uh, around, which children were not in school. So some people allowed their children to go so that they could eat, so that they'd have food and they'd be protected in that way. And other people protested, and Indian agents. I'm gonna start right there. Now you see what Esau has done with his little schemes and his trickery back then. He made our people uh, dependent on the food sources so we can do what, do what they wanted us to do, just like the wells today. You know, you got the welfare system and all these different uh, benefits they use 
for our people, our people to what? To depend on them, right? And so it says what? When uh, they wasn't uh, trying to cooperate, they wouldn't feed them, you know? Now, and in other words, it's the same thing what is about to happen with this market of bees, you know? That's in Revelations 13, 16, and 17. It's going to be to the point where, you know, uh, if you do not cooperate and get the chip, you're not going to be able to eat. You know, so the same thing back then, man, this 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 devil know exactly what he's doing. All right. And uh, and another thing, it says they should know how many people or how many how many kids if they were there or not. Like, that's the same thing what they would do with like that. uh The census type of thing they got going on or uh or those back to welfare once again, because when they asked, the, they asked the mother how many kids are in the house, you know. And that's how they base uh, how many food stamps you're going to get. All right, but let me, I want to read this article. Uh, quick article. It's about the uh, Richard Henry Pratt, you know, that devil. The one that uh, started, all, started this. All right, and it says, Pratt's efforts resulted in the founding of the Carlisle Indian Industrial School at Carlisle, Pennsylvania in 1879. As the head of the school, Pratt stressed both academic and industrial education. He believed that if, if the Native American was to claim his rightful place as an American citizen, the rightful, and then he had nerd to say rightful place, after they then came and stole this goddamn land. Uh, as an American citizen, he must renounce his tribal way of a life and abandon the reservation and seek education and employment among the best classes of Americans. So they stole this land. They wanted you to uh, uh, bow down and be just like them or you or you uh, or you basically couldn't uh, you couldn't fit in or whatnot. But when I was before I was speaking on. uh uh, like the little welfare system basically playing when it was rationing out the food. What? Deuteronomy 28 and 47 says, Slot. Deuteronomy 28 and 48 says, Therefore thou shalt serve thine enemies, which Yahweh shall bring, Slot, which Yahweh which shall send against thee in hunger and thirstiness and nakedness, in the want of all things. All right? So that's what was going on. And, and that was the beginning of it. You know, or food and water. If you didn't send your child to the boarding schools. All right, and I got another article about this dude, Richard Henry Pratt. Where I want to go. It says, in the year 1874, the government decided to take decisive action against the Indians. The factors which influenced this decision were the extremely hostile attitude of the of the Indians and the increase in raids and the adobe walls and lost valleys fights. The campaign put an end to the long bloody war that had been waged on the West Texas frontier. Orders were given to five Columbus, five Colum columns soldiers to march from north, south, east, west toward the panhandle of Texas. The result of this campaign was the pla placement of the Indians on reservations. In 1875, Captain Richard Pratt escorted 72 Indian warriors suspected of murdering white settlers to Fort Marion in St. Augustine, Florida. Once there, Pratt began an ambition experiment which involved teaching the Indians to read and write English, putting them in uniforms and drilling them like soldiers. Kill the Indian and save the man was Pratt's motto. You know, so they was basically indoctrinating them, taking them away from their heritage and, like, and their culture, which they knew before. All right. And that was prophecy. It says. Yeah, so. That, that That's what was going on. And you have the same thing, you know, going on now within these schools today. You know, with, within our kids. You know, that's why everybody is so, so bugged out. And uh, I want to get this last scripture. It says. John 10 and 10. The thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. You know, so what did they came to do? They came and destroyed our heritage, you know, stole the land and destroyed our heritage. 
Alright, so with that, Shalom.